this journal club, we're going to look at Staphne bone cavities. A Staphne bone cavity is a well-defined defect along the lingual surface of the mandible, and it occurs in a characteristic location. You can see that the defect is lined by cortical bone. That's very important for a specific diagnosis. Here, in this particular patient, the defect is filled with fat, although sometimes you see there is glandular tissue within the defect. Here's an example on the other side of the mandible showing the defect filled with gland, glandular material. This is a portion of the submandibular gland that is coming around the edge of the pterygoid musculature. Here's an example on MRI where you can pretty clearly see the submandibular gland sort of herniating into the defect. The theory behind these is that these are pressure erosions from a surrounding gland uh, and it only intermittently herniates into the defect and that's why sometimes, usually, it's filled with fat. This is supported by the finding that other salivary glands can produce similar defects. Another important radiologic element in the diagnosis is the relationship to the inferior alveolar canal. You can see that this Staphne bone cavity, again, well circumscribed cortical bone around the outside filled with fat, you can see that it is inferior to the inferior alveolar canal. That is a reliable relationship and important to establishing the diagnosis. Other salivary glands can produce similar defects, although they are much less common. Here's an example of a sublingual gland herniating into a well-corticated defect more anteriorly along the lingual surface of the mandible. Here's an example of the parotid gland doing the same thing. You can see here at the angle of the mandible, again, a well-corticated defect that has been filled by herniated parotid gland. The sublingual and parotid versions are much less common than the submandibular version, and they are sometimes given unusual names like anterior lingual mandibular salivary gland defect, but rather than that mouthful, I think it's easier to refer to them as Staphne bone cavities prefixed by the gland in question, so a sublingual Staphne bone cavity or a parotid Staphne bone cavity.